Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Improved Dynamic Model of Voltage Mode Controlled TCDC Converters, including Sampling Effect. This is the outline of this presentation. We will see first an introduction, then we will show the natural and forced discrete responses of voltage mode controlled DCDC converters. From then, we will derive the improved model in the S variable domain. And finally, we will see an example and QSPICE verification. These are two relevant videos related to this topic, power electronics number 17, solving difference equations, and power electronics number 71, improved dynamic model of current mode controlled DC-DC converters. So if you are not familiar with the discrete modeling of DC-DC converters, please take a look at these videos. In a previous video, LTS5 is number 7, we talk about closed loop frequency response of a DC-DC converter and we presented this back converter operating in closed loop in which we use this PI compensator, a PWN modulator, the driver, to drive the switch of the converter. In the video, we explained how to design the PI compensator and we saw the response of the loop gain versus frequency as shown here. And we have heard many times that if this is the loop gain of our converter, the crossover frequency is like this, F sub zero here. And then we have heard that this crossover frequency has to be much lower than the switching frequency of the converter. In fact, has to be lower than half of the switching frequency, which is the Nyquist frequency. Because otherwise, if our crossover frequency is very close to half of the switching frequency, we can have stability issues. And also, if we go beyond half of the switching frequency, then we can have aliasing effect. So the question here is why this crossover frequency has to be much lower than half of the switching frequency, which is the reason why we have to keep this crossover frequency limited below half of the switching frequency. In fact, usually a typical value is one tenth of the switching frequency or even one twentieth of the switching frequency. So this is the question that we are going to try to answer in this video. To further investigate this, we have to revisit the operation of the PWM modulator. We have here the waveforms. This is our SOTU waveform in red. In blue, we have the control voltage. So we use a comparator as shown here to generate the gate signal. So we can see that PWM is an inherent discrete process. And therefore, it must be modeled by a discrete transfer function. And this is so because we can only update the value of the duty cycle once per switching period. If something happens to the output of voltage of the converter in the middle of the period, then we cannot change anything until the next period. So we need some time to actuate on the converter. So as shown here, we can say that the value of the duty cycle is sampled once per switching period. The common model for the PWM modulator is as shown here. We have the control voltage here at the input and we have the duty cycle signal at the output and the gain is 1 over VPP as we know where VPP is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the sawtooth waveform. But this is a very simple model in which we are not considering the sampling effect of the PWM modulator. So today what we are going to do is to obtain the discrete behavior as a difference equation by adding the natural response and the forced response of the PWM modulator. And we will do this by following the same process that we studied in previous videos. 
in Power Electronics number 70, we studied how to solve different equations, and this is important to understand what we saw in this other video, Power Electronics number 71, improved dynamic model of current mode controlled DC-DC converters. And today we are going to apply this same methodology here to the PWM modulator and then to the voltage controlled DC-DC converter. So, as we have done for the case of current mode control, we first obtain the natural response. The natural response is how the output signal, the duty cycle, is going to change if we perform a change on the signal itself. So, in this case, if for any reason the duty cycle here at this point changes a little bit, as shown here by this value, delta d of k at this switching period, then uh, this perturbation is not going to affect the value of the next duty cycle in the next switching period, because it's going to be given by this comparison here. So we can say that a perturbation on the duty cycle does not produce any effect on the next cycle, and therefore the natural response delta d of k plus 1 is equal to 0. On the other hand, we have the first response, which is to study what happens with the output signal with the duty cycle when we do a perturbation on the input signal, which is here the control voltage. So at this point here, we have a perturbation on the control voltage up to this value, delta vc of k plus 1. So the new value of the duty cycle is given by this intersection here. So this is the perturbation that we are going to have on the duty cycle. We can calculate the value of this perturbation and we can say that a perturbation on the control voltage produces a perturbation on the duty cycle of the same sampling interval which is given by this expression here. The gain, once again, is 1 over VPP. So now we only have to obtain the complete response by adding the natural response, which is 0, and the fourth response. Now we can go into Z domain, and then we will obtain this relationship, and finally this is the transfer function in the Z variable domain. And now we want to obtain the continuous response of the modulator considering the sampling effect. So we do as we have done in this previous video, power electronics number 71 for the case of current mode control. From the input, which is the control voltage, to the output, the generation of the duty cycle, we have the sampler, which has a gain that can be approximated by 1 over t. We have the PWM modulator, the discrete behavior of the PWM modulator, with a gain of 1 over VPP. And then we have the zero order hold that generates the analog value of the duty cycle from the discrete value of the duty cycle. And as we know, the transfer function corresponding to the zero order whole block is this one here. So the complete transfer function in the analog domain, in the S domain, is as shown here. We have the product of the three gains. And then, as we have done also in this previous video, we can use the following approximation for E rise to minus ST, as shown here, and then substituting this value in this equation, we can obtain the final response of the modulator, considering the sampling behavior. And then, by operating, we can get this final response of the modulator. So we can see that is a second order response in which we have the natural angular frequency is this value, 2 times square root of 3 divided by the switching period, or in hertz, it is equal to 0 0.55, the switching frequency. And the damping factor is the square root of 3 divided by 2, so this is 0 0.866, 
So this is lower than one. So this is an underdumped response, but it's not very underdumped because it's quite close to one. So the poles are as shown here. We have to conjugate poles. They can be represented on the imaginary plane as shown here. These are the positions. The real part is three times the switching frequency and the imaginary component is the square root of 3 times the switching frequency. So we can see that these two poles are always in the same position and they are on the left half plane. So the response of the system is always stable. In the case of current mode control, as we saw in the previous video, the position of these poles depends on the slope that we have in the inductor current. And depending on these slopes, we can have even an unstable operation of the system. This happens, for example, in the VAC converter operating with a duty cycle higher than 0.5, as we know. But here, the voltage control, even considering the sampling effect, we can see that it's always stable. And now we can do the same process that we did in previous video. So this is the back converter model. This is the response of the output voltage versus the duty cycle, the dynamic response. So if we now consider the response of the modulator, including sampling effect, we have to consider the response of this transfer function, G sub M which is not only now 1 over BPP, but we have this other factor here, this other response, which corresponds to a second order system, and then times the transfer function GD. So even though the complete system is going to be stable in open loop, there is no any issue regarding stability, we have this factor, and this factor is going to introduce a change of the total phase of the system. We're going to see this in the next slide. So this is the final control transfer function that we are going to have for the back converter that we are studying in this case. This is the output voltage versus the control voltage. So we have the transfer function G sub M of the modulator, including sampling effect, which is all this in red. And then we have the transfer function of the converter GD of S that we have seen in previous slide. So this is the block diagram of the complete system. And here we have the different transfer functions. So in red, we have the transfer function corresponding to G sub M. In blue, the representation of G sub D. And finally, G sub C, which is in green, the complete transfer function. So we can see that at this point, we will have an increase in the slope of the control transfer function. And of course, as we know, below this frequency here, in this area, we are going to have a decrease of the phase of the control transfer function G sub C due to the phase that is adding here this expression in which we are considering the sampling effect of the modulator. Let's see now a particular example to make this clearer. So this is the converter that we are considering in this example. It's a back converter. Here we have the particular values in this case in blue and we are doing a voltage control by comparing the control voltage with a sawtooth waveform with a BPP value equal to 1 volt and at 100 kilohertz. So this is the complete transfer function from the control voltage to the output voltage, which is given by G sub M times G sub D. And here in red, we can see the response of G sub M, which is the modulator, including the sampling effect. And this is G sub D in blue. And then finally, G sub C, the total control transfer function in green. So we can see how we have here around this point a decrease. This is not very important, but here the important part is that the phase of G sub C in green 
we can see that is going to decrease much quicker than the ideal situation in which we are not considering the sampling effect of the modulator, which is the response here in blue, corresponds to the phase of G sub D only if we are not considering the sampling effect. So this higher rate of decrease of G sub C can make our system unstable in closed loop if we are using a bandwidth too great to close to half of the switching frequency. And finally, here we have a verification using QSPICE. This is not very easy to do by simulation. We need to do the simulation very carefully. In fact, in order to make the simulation quicker, here we have used only the square voltage waveform generated from the modulator here. So we are not using a switch or a diode. So this is going to be much quicker to simulate because we have to be totally sure that we are going to get steady state operation when we are injecting here the perturbation signal. So here we are injecting the perturbation signal superposed to the duty cycle and then with these statements that we have seen many times before in other videos, we are getting the different points corresponding to the dynamic response at different frequencies. But we have to be totally sure that we are getting steady state before measuring the gain and the phase of the response. So what we have done here is to use a total number of cycles equal to 100. So this means that we are injecting 100 cycles of the perturbation to get steady state at the end. And we are using only the last two cycles to measure the gain and the phase and to plot finally the responses that we can see here on the right. And here below, we have included for comparison the average model of the back converter. If you are not familiar with this model, please take a look at this video, Power Electronics number three, in which we are showing how to obtain this type of models that are very useful. Is the average model of the converter. And with this, we can do the simulation to obtain the response of the converter without including the sampling effect. So on the right, we can see here the gain of the response. In green, we have the response of the ideal converter without including the sampling effect. And in red, we have the response, the complete response, including the sampling effect. So we can see that they are pretty much the same, but in this area here, we have some differences. It's difficult to obtain this with accuracy because we are getting too close to half of the switching frequency. The switching frequency here is 100 kilohertz. And in this part, we are around 50 kilohertz. So we have aliasing effect and so on. So it is difficult to obtain the response of the gain. But in the case of the phases, we can see better the difference between the ideal response in blue without considering the sampling effect and the response, the phase corresponding when we are considering the sampling effect because the effect on the phase occurs at much lower frequency. So we can see how here we have a decrease of the phase much quicker than in the ideal response. And this is the reason why we have to be careful when we are designing our converter in closed loop, not to get very close to half of the switching frequency, not only due to the aliasing effect and due to the nonlinear effects, but also due to this decrease of the phase that can make our system in closed loop to get unstable because we are having a phase margin much smaller than the value that we think we have. These files are going to be available on my website at github. This is the link here so you can try the simulation by yourself. Well, this concludes this presentation today. Please let me know what you think about this modeling 
of the converter, including the sampling effect of the modulator. You can send me your comments and questions through the comment section of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.